Where mental health is such a taboo, you're not allowed to have anything wrong with you. People will not accept you, will not like you, will never love you. You somehow create this persona or this mask. You need to appear a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way. You put yourself into this dark box um, of loneliness, of emptiness. And that part of you gets sort of smaller and smaller, tighter and tighter, and the pressure increases. Of course, it's easier to tell someone, don't be scared, don't be afraid, don't tick. Ready? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm Nita, and I have Tourette's. It's a neurological condition, which means that my brain reacts, responds, fires uh, in a way that makes my body um, act without my conscious control. It used to be really bad when I was a kid so I was diagnosed about 25 years ago and um, after that we my parents and I were just left to find out or figure out how to help the ticks go away or whatever my parents thought would would help didn't understand what it was there wasn't much support in the 90s um, and doctors didn't know too much, or maybe that wasn't available to us. So um, I tried different medications. I tried um, natural medication, um, but none of it really worked. Um, things at home were pretty rough. I think as a kid, I had a lot of screaming, shouting, arguing, um, I guess what people do when they're trying to work things out and are struggling themselves. Um, so I grew up with a lot of shame, guilt, um, for, for being alive really. Um, so that, I guess, brought me to a point of um, having quite low self-worth. And on the outside I could be quite loud and, and, and bubbly and, and mask it quite well. Um, but on the inside there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. I, I grew up uh, in, in my home with my brother, who's a little bit younger than me and my mum and dad. And it was just us. Um, my parents did struggle a lot, you know, they, they came here in the 80s and set up a life for themselves and they worked really hard and they do work really hard. Um, but I don't think that perhaps everyone is as fortunate to have a home life that embeds emotional stability. So we grew up in the same way, or at least I, I did. Um, didn't quite understand how to connect with people um, 
did understand what it meant to respect people's boundaries. So, um, and, and learned that, you know, if, if you're scared all the time, then you've got to fight. You've got to fight in this world to, to survive. Um, so my, my paradigm really was built on those rocky, um, on a rocky foundation. I struggled a lot at school with my schoolwork um, when my Tourette's got bad. But to be fair, the Tourette's got really bad as a teenager. Um, and although I could apply myself in class, in school, um, my behaviour was always a bit erratic or quite a, a, quite a lot. Um, so that for that, it was uh, seen as bad behaviour. Um, I'd say things out of the blue. I'd, fight, I'd have a rage attacks, or as I like to call it, the rage wave. Um, I'd be offended really easily. I'd be quite sensitive, in fact. I remember once I, um, this girl really upset me first thing in the morning, and um, I cried all day. <laughs> and by the afternoon, you know, by three o'clock when it was time to go home and we came back to tutor, and I was still crying. <laughs> and uh, she said, you know, you're still crying. And um, I felt really stupid about it inside, but I still felt really hurt. So um, I guess I realise now that, you know, I've learnt now that it's to do with the aspect of Tourette's um, and this iceberg of, of um, emotions and mental health that's underlying um, right at the bottom, but at the top you're just seeing the, the bad behaviour, you're just seeing the erraticness, you're just seeing the person not being able to communicate or be in, be in a good relationship with you or, or be normal, you know, whatever that means. not really you are nothing you are nothing nothing is important <laughs> forget it <laughs> no you're doing good you're doing good you're doing good so yeah talk about teenage years okay teenage years so um right my tics were awful teenage years i had the head um the eye rolling the neck jerking my signature move which is my punch in the stomach i have abs of steel actually no i don't they're just covered very well. Um, punching in the stomach, and that was a real release for me. Um, any time I was overwhelmed with emotions, um, any stress, any any time I felt I was going to be bullied or someone was going to try and step and push push past my boundaries, my ticks would would you know I'd have an onset tick attack. So I found exercise. Exercise helped for a little bit, but then what do you do when you stop exercising? What do you do when you stop smoking? You know, you, you become this little angry ball of tick that is trying to find a way to help calm this erratic um, feeling in your body, the, the urge to, to explode, you know, this rage that you go through. Um, so, so teenage years, pretty much was, was quite tough. I mean, I had some I had some good friends for, for a little while, but even with that, I had this real sense of paranoia around people. Um, yeah, do they like me? Do they really like me? Do they not like me? And I was always trying to do things to make people like me or, 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 or assuage them to want to hang out with me. And, and part of that, 
came with certain maladaptive behaviours. Um, part of that came with the, the rebellious side, part of that came with being cheeky um, or funny. I like to think of myself as a comedian from time to time. I'm probably not that funny. Before you tip. Before I tip. Oh. It's like this pressure is 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 building up inside and it needs to be released. Um, so I used to say when when my mum used to ask me this, how does it feel? I feel as if I'm being drowned and as I'm being drowned when I reach up for air. Um, is obviously when you can breathe. So if you're being drowned and you can't breathe, you're you're fighting, right? You're fighting to get some air. That's what the tick feels like. Um, and the urge can be just as strong. Um, and if I don't reach up for air, if I don't punch myself in the stomach, I'm not getting that release. Um, I feel like I'm suffocating in life. Um, and if anyone's ever held their breath for long enough, then, then you know what that feels like. You need to tick, you need to breathe. Uh, I think that's where the, the rage as well happens. It happens so quickly. Um, but once it's gone, it's gone. But that, of course, in modern society is not, you know, it's, it's not the social norm. You can't behave like that when you're an adult. You can't just go in have an outburst and, and, and expect people to accept it and it shouldn't be accepted you know I, sh I shouldn't be able to just explode when I feel like it's so so um I started trying various strategies and and, and they they started working and just take the time to just be present yeah just make yourself comfortable. And just while you're doing that, just start to feel really comfortable. And just tune in to your breathing. And settle down even more. That's right. And we're going to take a few deep breaths just to calm the body down completely. So when I ask you, I just want you to take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, just send a wave of pleasant relaxation all the way through your body right from the top of your head, right down to the tips of your toes. And then just continue breathing gently. Just let your breathing return to normal. That's good. And just gently release attention. And now I just want you to tense your legs and your feet. Tense them up. Tense, 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 tense and relax them. 
and just notice how much more relaxed and heavy your legs feel. And then once again, tense your legs and your feet. Tense, 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 tense. And relax, let go of this. And just let relaxation spread through the whole of your body. And now I want you to do the same thing with your arms. Tense, 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 tense. And release, let go, let them hang by your sides. Gently going deeper into relaxation. And again, tense your arms, make fists, tense, tense, tense. And now release, let go, relax. And just enjoy the feeling of deeper relaxation. And now just one more time, I want you to tense the whole of your body, tense, 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 your toes, your feet, everything tense, shoulders, and release, let go, relax. Just let everything go, feeling relaxed, releasing tension, enjoying the calmness. And just making yourself even more comfortable, even more relaxed. And now I want you to imagine going and being in your favourite place. It might be somewhere you know or just somewhere you imagine. It doesn't matter. Just imagine yourself being there. Make it as vivid and real as you can. Imagine what you can see around you. Picture everything around you. Picture maybe the flowers or the trees or the different objects. Imagine the sounds, really hear those sounds in your imagination. And now tune in to the different smells. The different feelings maybe the wind or the sun, maybe something else. And just imagine yourself in the middle of your favorite place, feeling totally calm, totally relaxed in control.
every day. Day to day life, uh, I used to um, tick a lot in class as a teenager and um, one of my, one of the things I used to do was, <laughs> I don't know if I should talk about my, my marker pen. <laughs> My electric pen, don't you know? <laughs> Sorry. Um, day to day was 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 tough because I would have to excuse myself from anywhere and and tick one out, as I like to call it. So tick in private. It was really embarrassing to to have to have the ticks I had, and in fact, my parents didn't accept it. So. Their thing for me was, you don't have Tourette's, stop it, stop doing it. And, um, and when that didn't work, um, it was mimicked and it was echoed back to me. So sometimes I'd tick and I'd hear it back through the walls in my house. And that, and I know that they didn't mean to do, you know, mean to make me feel bad. They were just trying what they thought would work best. But that built up a level of anxiety for me because then it felt like I was constantly being bullied and if I ticked then someone's going to take the mick. Someone's going to laugh at me, someone's going to um, show me how ridiculous I am, how embarrassing I am. I think when I was about um, around 30 my little brother was born, I've got two brothers so um, I used to take care of him a lot. Um, and that was fine, that was great, because I had a sense of responsibility. Um, and that's when I had a bit of freedom. So I'm a lot more relaxed when I'm not around people. Um, and I grew up thinking that I needed to be around people because of the family unit. I come from quite a large family. Um, but I think a lot of that is because it's crossing over with my reality and my beliefs, and that's been constantly battled with. Um, and if you're constantly fighting someone, you're, con you're going to be in fight or flight mode and you're going to teach yourself that that's how you survive. And that's wrong. That's wrong. I shouldn't have to survive all the time. You keep keeping it in. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, man. No, no, that's right. the intro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is actually going to make me feel like I need to tick. I was supposed to be advocating, like... I've got rid of Tourette's. Fuck you, Tourette's. Uh, no. be, be yourself. I mean, obviously, just... Yeah, don't. Be yourself. Uh, be yourself. Be yourself. I think where mental health was such a taboo, you know, you're, you're not allowed to have anything wrong with you. you. You somehow create this persona or this mask that you need to appear a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way. And that part of you that is being suppressed gets as if it gets sort of smaller and smaller, tighter and tighter, and the pressure increases. So as I, I think I can talk about it a lot more because I've had time to work through, um, through certain self-development programs. I've had time to reflect, um, and I've also created a program uh, that worked for me. And what I came to realise is, is instead of letting Tourette's be a weapon that was making me feel shame and guilt my life, why not share these strategies with people and share with them what they can do to help not become a victim to their neurological condition. I've carried out various therapies and initially I started off with meeting people going through psychologists and psychiatrists and they just weren't working for me. But when I started to apply Jungian, a Jungian approach um, which derives from uh, psychologist Carl Jung's methodologies. Um, I worked through shadow therapy, 
um, uh, I look, started looking at the archetypes uh, and started understanding what these entities meant, it stopped feeling like there was some conspiracy to ruin my life. And I think that's where the mental health decline occurs. The paranoia, persecutory delusions and ideas that people will not accept you, will not like you, will never love you. Um, when that paradigm starts to become real, you put yourself into this dark box um, of loneliness, of emptiness. Uh, and I think even in that space, I was able to learn about who I was, learn about my fears. And Tourette's really was this huge, hidden away box that I had stored at the back of my back of my mind somewhere. And um, I hope that we can talk more and discuss the things that you've been through and find some sort of solution that works for you. And of course, somewhere that you can be self-sufficient and take care of your own mind, body and spirit. Thank you so much for listening.